I was messing around with curves in geometry nodes when I came across an effect that I liked quite a bit, so I figured I would make a tutorial on it. The setup is fairly simple, and it can be divided into three steps. Instancing, curve manipulation, and conversion to mesh. So let me show you how to create these spiraling splines with geometry nodes. Add a plane. Then head over to the geometry nodes workspace and add a new node tree. Let's start by creating the splines, or curves, that we will use as a base. Add a mesh circle, a curve line, a resample curve node, and an instance on points node. Set the vertices of the mesh circle to 64 and the radius to something small like 0.001. Then connect it to the points input. Set the start point C of the curve line to 10, and the end point C to 0. Connect the curve line to the resample curve node. Set the count to 16, then connect it to the instance input. The count value determines how many points the curve consists of, and it will affect how complex the spiraling of the curves will be. I just chose 16 because it gives a nice result. Next, let's make the instanced curves point outwards from the center. Add a position node, and an align Euler to vector node. Connect the position node to the vector input, and set the axis to C. Then connect it to the rotation input of the instance on points node. With the basic setup done, let's create the spiraling effect. To do this, we will rotate each point of the curves around the center, and the amount of rotation applied will be determined by each point's distance from the center. That way, points further away from the center will rotate faster than points closer to the center. Add a Realize Instances node, a Set Position node, a Vector Math node set to Distance, and a Vector Rotate node. Connect the Position node to the Vector input of the Vector Rotate node. Then connect that node to the position input of the set position node. Connect the position node to the distance node. And finally, connect the distance node to the angle input of the vector rotate node. Also, set all the axis values of the vector rotate node to 1. As you can see, we get a pretty interesting shape of spiraling splines. But let's add some functionality to make it both manually controllable and animated. First, add a math node set to multiply, and connect it between a distance node and the vector rotate node. By changing the multiply value, we can now change the shape. For static render, this is all we need, but let me show you how you can make it procedurally animated as well. Add a scene time node and a math node set to divide. And connect them like this. If we press play now, the splines will rapidly change their shape. But by increasing the divide value, we can control the speed to whatever we want. Though you might want to set the end frame of the timeline to something higher, like 2000, if you're using a slower speed. Now all that's left to do is to turn the curves to a mesh. But first, let's smooth out the curves by adding a set spline type node set to Bezier. And a set handle type node set to Auto. Add a set curve radius node, 
a spline parameter node, a curve to mesh node, and a curve circle node. Connect the factor of the spline parameter to the radius input of the set curve radius node. This sets the internal radius value of the points of the curves to a value between 0 and 1, depending on their positions along the curves. Finally, set the resolution of the curve circle to 4. Connect it to the profile curve input of the curve to mesh node, and set the radius to 0 0.15. If you want thicker or thinner splines, just adjust the radius value. With this setup, we can control a couple of things that will affect the end result quite a bit. The vertices of the mesh circle control so many splines that are instanced, so if you want more or less, you can change that here. The count value of the resampled curve node controls how many points each curve is made up of. So if you want more or less complexity, you can change this value. Changing the start C value of the curve line will change the length of the curves, and it will also affect some other aspects of the final results. By changing the axis values of the vector rotate node, we can limit the rotations to, for example, only one axis, or any combination of two axes. And finally, changing the factor of the align oil to vector node will affect the overall shape of the spiraling splines. If you want to add a material to the splines, add a set material node and select a material in a dropdown. And lastly, if you want to smooth out the mesh even more, add a subdivision surface node. Just keep in mind that this will decrease viewport performance, especially if you have a lot of splines, so I would recommend to only add it when it's time to render. And that's about it. I hope you found this video helpful, and that you learned something new. See you next time.